Hello children, from chapter number 11, Human Eye and the Colorful World, we have discussed all the topics and from the last video lesson, we have started taking a recap of the chapter by going through the pages of the chapter. So last period, we discussed about the structure of human eye and different parts of human eye. Then we also discussed about power of accommodation and the defects of vision and their correction in detail. Today we will take a recap of the remaining part of the lesson. So refraction of light through a prism. So if you remember I told you that prism is a transparent material which is bounded by two triangular surfaces. So look at the figure which is flashing there on the screen. Two triangular surfaces and three rectangular lateral surfaces like this. Then we did an activity of tracing a path of ray of light through prism and this activity we are going to perform in our lab also. So this will give us an idea about how refraction occurs at two places when the light passes through the prism. Then dispersion of white light by a glass prism. So the splitting of white light into seven constituent colors, this is called as dispersion of light. And this dispersion of light is observed in, in prism. So when a beam of white light is incident on one of the surfaces of glass prism, it splits into seven constituent colors like this. So you can observe in the diagram here that a beam of white light is dispersed into seven constituent colors and the band of this seven constituent colors is called as spectrum. Then we discussed about a very interesting activity which is performed by son Isaac Newton that when the two glass prisms are kept in such a manner that one is upright and the other prism is kept inverted in front of that, it is seen that when the beam of white light falls on the first prism, it splits into seven constituent colors. And if the seven constituent colors are allowed to fall on the other prism which is kept in, inverted in front of the first prism, then this inverted prism recollects all the seven constituent colors and what we see outside is white light again. So this activity tells us that white light is a mixture of seven constituent colors and when you mix this seven constituent colors what again you get is a white light. After this we discussed about the beautiful phenomena which we observe in nature that is formation of rainbow and rainbow is a natural spectrum which appears in the sky after it rains. So after it rains there are several or millions water droplets present in the atmosphere. Every droplet of water acts like a prism and when the sunlight falls on these water droplets, these water droplets they disperse the sunlight into seven constituent colors and the overall effect is the beautiful spectrum in the sky. So how it occurs? First the light falls on the water droplet, then the light first gets refracted and dispersed into seven constituent colors. Then inside the water droplets, the seven constituent colors gets reflected. There is total internal reflection inside the water droplet and then once again refraction of light occurs when the seven constituent colors come out of the water droplet. And the overall effect of so many water droplets present in the atmosphere is formation of rainbow. So all these tiny prisms, tiny droplets I must say, acts like prism in the atmosphere and split the white color into seven constituent colors and that is rainbow. 
I want to show you one interesting thing dear children just say this this is something which I want to share with you all dear children since we are talking about rainbow these are the pictures which are clicked by me last week and these are the real pictures I thought it is relevant because we are talking about formation of a rainbow and this is a nice thing to share with you all so I hope you like the picture move to the next topic that is atmospheric refraction so children for refraction two mediums are required and in the atmosphere how is the light refracted so in the atmosphere as I told you that atmosphere is made up of several layers of air and the temperature of the air at every layer is different so atmosphere is made from the pockets of warm and cool air and the refractive index of this warm and the cool air is different therefore when light passes through the several layers of air in the atmosphere the light gets refracted and this is how atmospheric refraction occurs now on smaller scale what we see I'll give you some example that at the time of Holi when we fire the Holi we see the objects flickering and this is because when we fire the Holi the air just above the fire it becomes warmer and warm air is lighter than the cool air so warm air moves in the upward direction now due to this the place of the warm air is taken by the cool air so subsequently the air moves in the upward direction and the light of the holy fire goes through this you know layer of air which is at different temperature and the overall effect of this is that we see the objects flickering through the fire of the holy other example I want to tell you that uh, when it is very hot the temperature is too high and when you are traveling on the road sometimes you observe the mirror image of the vehicle into the road into the tar road this is because because of the refraction of light the observer gets the feeling of water near the object that's just the optical illusion and therefore the observer sees the inverted image of the object into the water like thing which is not actually water but it is an optical illusion because of the refraction of light and this optical illusion is called as mirage and we have seen this in our video lesson in detail the formation of mirage then on the larger scale the atmospheric refraction occurs and that is we see the stars in the sky twinkling dear children uh, we see the star slightly above its actual position in the sky this position is called as an apparent position so we observe the stars little at the higher position than their original position in the sky due to refraction mm -hmm. of light so when the starlight stars are far away from us they are very very at a larger distance from the surface of the earth so when the starlight enters into the earth's atmosphere the starlight passes through several layers of air the diagram will give you an idea that when the light from the star enters into earth's atmosphere the light passes through pockets of cold and warm air continuously and hence it bends towards the normal all the time and this bending towards the normal all the time gives us the overall effect of its position relatively at the higher position than its original position that is the apparent position so at the apparent position when we see star it is continuously moving and changing its place and the light passes through several layers of air all the time so when the star gives light sometimes it is dim light sometimes it is bright light and the overall effect is twinkling of the star 
The star sprinkles, but the planets do not. Reason is, stars are far away from us, so they are considered as point source. And planets are relatively closer to us, and they are considered as the extended source of light. So planets are considered to be so many point sources together. Mm -hmm. So these point sources, when they give out light, their total effect gets nullified and therefore the planets do not twinkle. Then the other effect of atmospheric refraction is advanced sunrise and delay in the sunset. The sun is visible to about two minutes before the actual sunrise and about two minutes after the actual sunset because of atmospheric refraction. Now by actual sunrise we mean the actual crossing of the horizon by the sun. When the sun is below the horizon at the time of sunrise, we are able to see the sun above the horizon because of the atmospheric refraction of light. And at the time of sunset, the sun is dipped below the horizon. Then also we are able to see the sun above the horizon because of the refraction of light. And due to this, the duration of the day increases by 4 minutes. Then we learnt about scattering of light children and in scattering of light I told you that scattering is nothing but spreading of light in all possible random directions. Now in standard 9th we learnt the activity of Tyndall effect wherein we studied that when a beam of white light pass through a true solution and the colloidal solution, the white light or the beam of light is visible in colloidal solution and it is not visible in the true solution. Reason is the minute particles of the colloidal solution, they spread the light. Because of this white particles, the light falls on this white particles and then they spread the light. This Tyndall effect we can observe in the atmosphere also. This phenomena is seen when a fine beam of sunlight enters a smoke filled room through a small hole and thus scattering of light makes the particle visible. Tyndall effect can also be observed when the sunlight passes through a canopy of dense forest and in this case the tiny droplets in the mist, they scatter this light. Then we understood why the sky appears blue in color. The fine particles in the atmosphere, they have the size which is smaller than the wavelength of the visible light. They can scatter blue light which has the shorter wavelength than the red light which has relatively the longer wavelength. So when sunlight passes through the atmosphere, the fine particles in the atmosphere, they scatter the blue color more strongly than the red color and that is the reason sky appears blue in color. Now children, if the earth had no atmosphere, then there would not be any scattering of light and the sky would have appeared completely dark. The, at very higher altitude, the sky appears dark because there is no scattering of light there. And therefore, an astronaut, for him, sky looks dark black in color because in the space there is no atmosphere and hence there is no scattering of light there. Then we understood about the color of the sky at the time of sunrise and sunset. At sunrise and at sunset, the sun is very close to the horizon and the light from the sun travels through a thicker layers of atmosphere and very very long distance through the atmosphere. Near the horizon, most of the blue light and shorter wavelengths are scattered away by the particles of the air and the red light and the longer wavelengths 
reaches to our eyes so sun appears reddish at the time of sunset and sunrise then if you turn the page you will see the picture of an activity which we have discussed in detail in video lesson number 6 of this lesson through this activity our understanding will be very very clear that it is the blue color which scatters the most in the atmosphere and it is a red color which scatters the least so this image which is flashing there on the slide will give you an idea and you can recollect that we have discussed this it is the blue color which is seen in the beaker which contain sodium thiosulfide plus dilute sulfuric acid which gives the precipitate of sulfur after some time and in the beaker you can see blue color and the red color on the screen in the last part of the lesson the last page of the lesson they have given this image wherein it is described that at noon the light coming from the sun is white in color the reason is at noon the sun appears white because the light from the sun is directly overhead and it travels relatively short distance therefore the sun appears white in color and a very little of the blue and the violet colors are scattered and remaining all color scattered in the equal amount so the overall effect of the color is right so this is how the whole lesson we have discussed children i hope your understanding is clear we have discussed each and every topic in detail now you have some questions for your assignment please read the questions carefully and try to write it down so see you in the next video lecture till then bye and take care